Welcome to the Nurse Shark Academy Show, a Baxter Professional Services production. Welcome to the Nurse Shark Academy Show. I'm Tina Baxter, your host. We are experts in nursing and experts in business. Today, on today's show, season one, episode six, we have Tracina Miller, who is a registered nurse with a master's degree in education and the owner of Passionate Healthcare Training Academy. Welcome, Tracina, to the show. And welcome to the Nurse Shark Academy show. This is Tina Baxter and I'm your hostess. And I wanna say thank you for tuning in today. We have Tracina Miller here and she happens to be a nurse extraordinaire. Uh, She has launched her own business as a CPR instructor and she's added lactation specialist on there as well. She's got a bunch of things to talk about today. She's one of our fellow sharks. And I'm glad to have you. Welcome. Tracina, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. Thank you, Miss Tina. My name is Tracina Miller. I've been a registered nurse for it now to be 12 years this year. I can't believe it. Uh, I've been a nurse educator since 20, uh, well, I graduated with my master's in 2016. Um, I launched my business in uh, 2020. And since then, Miss Tina has been um, a blessing, an excellent uh, mentor, uh, preceptor, and um, I thank you for that. So I've been blessed to be able to do a lot within these um, 12 years. Great. Now, the first question that I always ask, and I want to thank you for the compliment, but the first question that I always ask is, why did you become a nurse? (laughs) It's so funny how I actually became a nurse. In all honesty, it's not like when I grew up, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm going to be a nurse. So originally I wanted to go into optometry. I'm not sure why, but it was just always like interested in it. So um, I went to, I graduated in 01 from Anderson High School. Um, I came down here to IUPUI and I actually uh, had enrolled as a pre-optometry student, but um, one of the counselors, an African-American counselor put me to the side and she was like, well, just in case, you need to have um, a backup. And uh, me being young, I'm like, okay. So she just stuck me in biology. So I ended up getting, I'm all right. so I ended up getting um, a biology degree in December of 2000. And, uh, no, excuse me. I graduated, yeah, 2005 or six or something like that. So after that, um, I, I had gotten married and I worked as a secretary. And uh, I tried to be in Tautomji school. I tried to, I enrolled, well, I applied at um, IU's, uh, Tennessee State. Um, yeah, and I didn't get in. I tried like three or four times and God said no. So I thought, oh my goodness. I was like, well, I guess I'll just stay here as a secretary. Like, and use, I never even used my biology degree. And my manager at the time, he came to me, he was like, um, you have so much potential. There's something you're not going to see here the rest of your life. And I thought, well, I mean, <laughs> why not? So I prayed about it and I was like, you know what? I was like, I'm going to go to nursing school. So I, uh, at the time, Harrison College was open. It was between Harrison and University of Indianapolis. And I asked for God to show me which way to go. And um, I got in with flying colors at U of I for the accelerated nursing program. So I graduated from there for my BSN in 2011. And at the time you could go on for your master's. So I was taking master's classes at the same time. Well, after I got my BSN, I I quit um, (laughs) the the program and got that. And then that's how I ended up. uh, But I always kind of had a passion when I was in nursing school to teach. I was just, I wanted, I knew that I wanted to reach back then and help us. Um, So that's how I ended up getting my master's. So that's how I became a nurse. (laughs) (laughs) that's a lot to to unpack so for you know one door closes another one opens yeah Uh uh-huh absolutely I I mean if you still want to go to optometry school I bet they take you now (laughs) I'm okay with that (laughs) you know and then I was like I never I never just realized that the path that God was actually leading me on at the time like I've been so blessed to have so many opportunities as a nurse that I don't think that I would have had those opportunities as an optometrist. I mean, I, I'm not, who knows? I don't know. Maybe God has showed me what, I'm not, what could have been, what couldn't have been. But for now, um, I've been blessed to be able to do this. Well, that's great. Now, how did, that, what was your first job out of nursing school? <laughs> My first job out of nursing school, I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> 
I worked med surge and it was awful GI med surge and I thought to myself oh my goodness what did I get myself into <laughs> so um I, but when I, like I said, when I was in uh, nursing school and I always had a passion for community nursing too. And um, I only had one daughter at the time and I applied to be a school nurse and I got the job and I was out there. So <laughs> I <laughs> honed in on the <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, blessings to those who are able to do floor nursing. That's the beauty of nursing. You know, you can do so much, you know, someone has to do it. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> I, you know, um, I did that as a nurse tech on med surge. And um, when I got out of school myself, I was offered a job in med surge, uh -huh. a job I really wanted in psychiatry. Finally, cool. the job in psychiatry, I was waiting, you know, I got the med surge offer first. And I went back to them and I said, now, if you really want me to work for you, Ball Hospital, y'all got to step this up because... <laughs> This other has already offered me a job and I need to make money. So uh -huh. uh, but I didn't really want to work there because the 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 hospital at that time was going through a lot of uh, flux. And uh -huh. so they were doing things like, and this is a, something that happens in nursing a lot, um, laying uh -huh. off the seasoned nurses and hiring all new grads. So the seasoned nurses didn't want to teach us anything. And um, well, uh, well, oh yeah. yeah, the manager of that no, unit yeah. just, she was an hour late for the appointment um she rushed through it didn't really ask me any questions just sort of at you know haphazardly you know offered me the job mm -hmm. just didn't really interview me at all and I just didn't mm -hmm. have a good feel for that but I knew mm -hmm. I was broke so I had to have a <laughs> right girl when they offered me my first pay I was like oh my god I'm rich <laughs> <laughs> Not knowing, you know, I was like, oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> well, you know, having worked as a CNA, I went from making $8 an hour <laughs> to 18 I thought I was making big time money then. Yeah. Right. When I was secretary, I started at 983 Then when I left, I think I was making like 10 28 To make almost double that, I was like, I was jumping in the room, like, you know, like, I done made it. But, you know, how life is, you're like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 fortunately, psychiatry came through, and that, that's Excuse all me. history. Which, by the way, those of you who want to hear my story, um, and I'll remember to try to remember to put the link up there. Uh, but you can go back to our very first podcast episode where I share my entrepreneurial journey and my journey as a nurse. But let's get back to you because okay. I wanted to know uh, when did you transition from wanting to have a nine to five, as we say, to working for someone else? Oh my God, I remember it just like it was yesterday. Um, I had started working at Ivy Tech and I had started working under the health sciences program. So uh, I was working there. So then I guess someone resigned and my boss reached, at the time reached out to me and was like, hey, are you interested in teaching the CNA class? And I thought, you know me, sure, I'll try it. So I absolutely loved it. So I can remember being on the floor with my students and it was amazing. And I thought, and then that's when God gave me the vision. And I was like, I was, you know, doing the clinicals and all that. And I was like, shoot, I can do this myself. And this was in, you know, 2016. So that's when I really felt the need to really, you know, do it. So then I really didn't think about it. And then I had a few corporate America jobs and it just wasn't, you know, working out then. <clears throat> yeah, so I had went to, um, I had went to um, a CNA seminar thing uh, with Victoria Randall. Well, it popped up on Facebook and I told my cousin, I was like, I'm thinking about going to this. And I was like, I don't know, because you know how I am. I can be kind of, and Brittany's like, girl, you better go. So I went and then I moved in. I was like, okay, like, this is what I need to be doing. So that's when, that's when I knew it was, that was the door I needed to walk into. Every, everybody's journey is different, but there's, so, there's this incident or event that just kind of hits that spark in you and you decide, you know what, I'm going to go for it. And I applaud mm -hmm. you for that. And Thank so, you. so where are you now? What's happening with your business now? And tell us about your business. Okay, so actually, uh, when I went to the seminar, uh, it was a CPR uh, instru trainer instructor there, and um, the Victoria Wendell was like, well, if you want to make an extra side hustle, you know, for your business or where your students can already be CPR certified, you can do this. And I thought, 
I don't really want to be a CPR instructor, in all honesty. So the pandemic, you know, had happened, whatever. And then uh, in like August of that year of 2020, or maybe it was July, one of those months, the the uh, owner from my friend here who owns her school, she called me. She was like, uh, her name is Victoria. She was like, uh, Miss Victoria's coming back because she lives in Maryland. She's coming back to train for CPR. You really need to hop on it. So I did it then. So that's how I launched the CPR business. And then people started hitting me up to, you know, train them. Like I was doing it at my daughter's school and everything. So that's how um, that part uh, launched. So that was been, that's been pretty cool too. And then the CLS part, that just kind of happened too uh, by accident because the job that I work for sent me for me to go so and i enjoyed it because i've always enjoyed um mother baby aspects there too because i actually wanted to be a labor and delivery nurse but i never got into it so that's been a blessing as well so it's been amazing an amazing journey you you know that just made me think of one thing that you could add to your your uh, list of things is you might <laughs> consider being a, a birth doula I, that is oh, yeah. <laughs> something that a lot of people are adding to their list of stuff to do. And I'm going to take off my mm -hmm. coaching hat there. But I just thought, you know, with what you're adding with the lactation specialist, you might consider adding that doula component. If you wanted to get into labor and delivery, this is a way you can do that to support the mom without having to do all the extra stuff. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Tina, you are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> this is so cool <laughs> it's so much stuff you can do you know like oh wow and that's the beauty of nursing is it not that there's so many yeah. different paths that you can take I, I, I've yeah. had uh, a few guests here and it's very interesting on how each nurse has found her way into what her passion is it's it's amazing to see that and you know most of us started out in med surge or you know bedside nursing but we've moved on and grown and and doing some things and some of us still kind of do a little bit of bedside nursing um i've had a couple nurses that you know work one or two days a week and they'll continue doing their bedside nursing but you know this is really a wonderful thing that we can do so much in nursing yeah i know and i enjoy doing the cna program i enjoy that because i feel like um at that stage we can instill so much in them like you just if, I mean, blessing to the CNAs, if you want to stop there, cool. But I feel like you can just instill so much, mm -hmm. you know, in them. Like, it opens up so many doors, you know? It's that entryway into the healthcare field. Yeah. And what I like about the CNA training is that you get enough to know if you're going to like nursing <laughs> and enough oh, yeah. to know if you're not. <laughs> you uh -huh. know, if you're going to faint at the sight of blood, you're going to figure that out on your CNA <laughs> Right. And you know, it's so funny because I didn't know if I actually wanted to be a nurse because I used to be scared of needles. And I was like, oh, I don't know. But I worked past that fear, like, you know, like, and did it. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I had a, a, a client that I was talking to and she wanted to be a veterinary tech. Uh -huh. She said she was doing really well, loved it until in her training, they were drawing blood from a cat and then she passed out. <laughs> 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 so, oh, so now she just kind of you know rescues animals <laughs> that'll work <laughs> gotta show you on it <laughs> yes <laughs> so there's there you know that's the, that's what's great is that we can be entrepreneurs we can be business owners we can um, take our skills that we have as nurses and mm -hmm. use those in another way. And so mm -hmm. my philosophy is always is, you know, leave your job, but don't leave the profession, right? <laughs> so <laughs> we all know what's a nurse, always a nurse. You're, you know, we're like, a, um, as I said in the last episode, with someone, we're like the mafia. We don't let you out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Even at church, you know, like, it's so funny because at church, I, when I go to church, I don't, I don't want to be a nurse, <laughs> but it just follows you, you know, like. It follows. Me. Bronx, I, I, I don't. I don't. I didn't. If I, I didn't even want the nurse plate. Lord forgive me, because I just didn't want nobody knows in my business. But I'm gonna go ahead and get that when I get my new car. Now, but yeah, <laughs> Rudy has one. I said I get. And my aunt. I said I guess I get one too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I for the longest time I wouldn't talk about being in psychiatry. 
I would not talk about that <clears throat> because inevitably when someone finds out that you're a psychiatric nurse, they sit down and start telling you their problems. <laughs> my uh, aunt, Ryan's aunt, my, my aunt, uh, Sybil, she's getting ready to graduate with her pediatric mental health nurse stuff. Mm. Protect, practitioner she's mm -hmm. amazing at it uh, amazing i know i know she's gonna go far doing that too the psych stuff kudos to you guys in that field that's a true calling <laughs> you know what it's it's like this this is what i discovered everybody has their niche like i my uh -huh. midwife friends i'm like you guys are <clears throat> awesome i could never be a midwife I know I do not have the patience for that. <laughs> you <know>? Yeah. <laughs> if you call me at two o'clock in the morning and wake me up, you better be having a baby. There's no Braxton Hicks with me. You've been interrupted my sleep. Yeah, I'm, I'm not good with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So what are your what are your goals for 2023? Oh, it's so funny that you asked me that. You know, my grandmother... Past. I lost my grandma unexpectedly last February. Uh, so after that, it was a lot. And so I kind of stepped away in all honesty and I just needed a break. Um, and I honestly, I don't know where I should say this or not. I, I don't know what goals I have for 2023. Um, <clears throat> I really need to sit down and uh, think about it and focus. And you know me, I've always been a planner. But then when it happened with my grandma, I'm just like, whatever's going to happen is really going to happen. So I don't have any plans. I enjoy what I do. I, I try to enjoy it. Well, I've always enjoyed my family, but now I really, really enjoy it to be content. Um, a few opportunities have opened up. So uh, we'll just see how it goes. Okay. That's what cool. I got for you. <laughs> well, I would say, uh, first of all, my condolences on the death of your grandmother, because, you know, I've, I've been in the same boat recently, mm -hmm. so, um, but shameless plug, we do have a strategic planning workshop coming up next Saturday. <laughs> Did you like to attend? it? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the <laughs> <laughs> be, be, yeah because bless your um, heart oh my god You're this amazing. is this is something that you know <sighs> i do for for my business is i set my goals but i do it for my personal life too i set my goals and intentions and so i think that kind of helps us to navigate where we're going um mm -hmm. so when the opportunities are there we're ready for them yeah and we're in the uh -huh. right mind mind space for that so um, yeah, so if you want to join us for that, <laughs> I didn't even know nothing about it, Miss T. <laughs> I will put that. On, I will put that in the okay. show notes as well. Um, actually, your your episode might go up afterwards, but um, but I will. It's on our uh, Facebook page and um, on our new website. So okay, uh, yeah. But let's let's talk about getting getting you ready for twenty twenty three because I think that's Thank important you. and. Yeah. Um, I think I think that will help you in the long run to not stress about it because you already have had that, you know, thinking and and kind of thinking forward. So mm -hmm. um, with that, um, as an entrepreneur, what is what is the biggest challenge you faced as an entrepreneur? I will have to say um, doubt at times. Um, in all honesty, I know I can do it, but sometimes. I don't know, like, and then with grandma, with that happening, it's just kind of been a lot. So, you know, I'm always a go-getter. I've always been a planner, you know, but I would say that's the biggest challenge. I used to say it was money, but now I really don't think it's money anymore. Um, because you can, all, as a nurse, you can always make the money. Um, so I would say that's the biggest challenge for me now. So Is I that, guess it's shifted. That self-doubt? Uh-huh. Yeah, and you would think, I guess, with me being all the support I've had over the years, I don't know, I guess it's just me. I don't know. <laughs> Can I just say that you're not the only one that's in, in that boat? We all have these moments of what we call um, that self-doubt or that mm -hmm. imposter syndrome that comes mm -hmm. in. And uh, there are certain ways, certainly ways for us to work through it. 
And yeah. my philosophy is, is that nurses are heroes. We are the heroes of our own epic journey. And yeah. I'm just going to say, wear your cape, girl. Wear your cape. <laughs> Thanks, <it> well. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, wow. So yeah. uh, our, lastly, if you had to give uh, one piece of advice to a new entrepreneur or a budding entrepreneur, what would it be? The advice I would have would be to stay true to yourself. Um, remember, like someone told me, like I'm, remember your why and just uh, follow your passion. Uh, you'll know if it's right or wrong. Um, there are a lot of people who could just say a whole bunch of stuff. Don't worry about that. Keep being you. Push forward. Remain true to yourself. And... Uh, people will see, people will know if, if it's, if you're passionate about it or not, because it will show in your attitude and your work. Um, don't forget about those people who've helped you along the way. Um, you know, your supporters, uh, your clientele, always say thank you, be kind, uh, be respectful. Even when I go and do clinicals, I thank my students all the time. If it wasn't for them, um, you know, we wouldn't be where we are. Um, you know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm just always myself. So that's the advice I would give. Being unapologetically you. Yes, absolutely. In a yes. professional way. But sometimes, you know, you can do you. But yes, be true to your heart. Mm -hmm. Stay true to your heart. And, and God will bless you. And, and then you, knowing what, when, what to say yes to and what to say no to. Because people come to you with all kinds of stuff. I didn't turn down a few six-figure gigs. Even my husband looked like, I can't believe you did that. Sometimes I say, I can't believe I did that neither, but you can have a whole bunch of money and be unhappy. Look at Michael Jackson. Sure, he couldn't even get no sleep. It's true. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yep. That's yeah. what I would say. Find find your passion, find your path mm -hmm. and stick to it and, oh, yeah. and go forward. Uh -huh. All right. Well, I want to thank you for coming on the show. And thank you for your time. It was a pleasure having you, as always. Thank you, Miss Tina. Pleasure and being in your presence. Thank you. And this is the Nurse Shark Academy. Um, you can find us on uh, Podbean and Spotify and other places where you get your podcasts. We thank you for uh, listening, and we hope to see you again. Goodbye. Wait, wait, don't go. There's a very important announcement from the Nurse Shark Academy. Look for the information at the nurseshark.academy.biz. Hi, this is Tina Baxter, and thank you for listening to our podcast and watching our video on YouTube. I want to thank you for joining us today. But before you go, please don't forget that we have the Nurse Shark Academy Freedom Finance Workshop coming up on March the 29th. 2023 from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we're going to bust the myths of having no time, no money, and no idea where to start to launch your own business as a nurse. So join us for the Nurse Shark Academy Freedom Finance Workshop on March 29th from 3 to 5. And please, before you go, please like, subscribe, and share our videos and our podcast content. Thank you.